Hello YouTube, this is Patrick and this is my review of Lincoln, the new film by Steven Spielberg starring Daniel Day-Lewis. I just got home from it. It was it was amazing. It was my favorite movie so far this year. Um, and I guess as far as the review goes, this is such a dense, dense movie that um, talking about everything that goes on in it is almost impossible. But uh, even though they, they did simplify it from a normal biopic by just condensing it to the last four months of Lincoln's life. I'll just say that anyone that's going to see this needs to be prepared for a movie that's just dialogue. Just wall-to-wall -wall dialogue. Some one-on-one -on -one scenes, some group scenes. I mean, they're all different types of dialogue scenes, so it made it feel fresh that way. Uh, but there's no real battle scenes except for, you know, a little short bit in uh, the prologue. Uh, which you've probably seen from any preview from it. But, um, yeah, it's all dialogue. And the thing about it is that the dialogue is so good that it's definitely winning, I think, the Oscar for the screenplay, uh, among other things, which I'll get into. But, uh, yeah, so you need to be ready for that. You need to be ready for a two-and-a-half-hour film that's just dialogue. And dialogue spoken by characters that are intelligent and spoken in the way that they spoke back then so you have to you know be able be willing to kind of pick up on it throughout a whole two and a half hour running time if you don't think you can do that or don't think you want to see a film that's all dialogue then don't go see it because that's exactly what this is um much i guess i'll get into spielberg first i'm steven spielberg and this is going to maybe sound cliche but he's pretty much my favorite director because as i grew up watching films i was able to kind of watch just as i grew up there was a film of his that i could watch almost like every year like it started with stuff like et the stuff he produced you know like the goonies and gremlins watching hook and then Jaws and Indiana Jones and then going to see Jurassic Park in the movie theaters and all this stuff. And then as I got older, I was able to watch, you know, Schindler's List and go see Saving Private Ryan in the movie theaters. So I just know the director I was able to kind of grow up like that, like mature with and, you know, watch his films and um, in that way. And um, yeah, so he's my favorite. But yeah, he's been on a bit of um, a slip the past his past three films. Crystal Skull was bad. Uh, Tintin, I, you can find a review on here of mine of Tintin. I gave it a 7. I should have gave it a 6. Technically good, but just kind of, yeah. Um, and War Horse, I like War Horse for what it is, but again, I was too easy on it at first. I gave it like an 8, and um, I push it down to a 7 now. And if anyone like hates all three of those movies, I wouldn't even argue with you. Um, but Lincoln is his best film since Munich, and it's not, I don't think it's a coincidence to say that Tony uh, Kushner, who wrote Munich, um, wrote Lincoln, and it looks like they're going to be working together again in the future, so, um, it looks like Spielberg found, you know, figured something out and found the right guy to latch onto, um, along with his, you know, cast of characters in the background with, like, John Williams and everyone, and that's kind of what I should talk about, at least... This movie, even though the trailer makes it look like War Horse, basically, except with Abraham Lincoln, it's not. It's not sentimental. Uh, well, it has moments of sentiment, but they feel genuine. They don't feel overdone. And, um, look, I love The Terminal, and The Terminal is extremely sentimental. And like I said, I enjoyed War Horse for what it is, but that is not this film. This is a film that if you don't like Spielberg for those particular reasons, you should still go see this. Because the moments of sentiment in this film don't feel like it's Spielberg, you know, throwing his um, his hat into the ring here. In fact, he did, he did exactly what he said he did, which is just hang back and just restrain himself. He just basically let the screenplay and the actors run the show. I mean, I'm sure he spoke to them and everything like that and gave direction, but um, he showed restraint. And the last time I ever think I really heard him talking about showing restraint on stuff was probably Schindler's List and... Um, I don't know where this film ranks um, among his, you know, his great films. I'd have to see it a couple more times, but I'd gladly do so. And, um, yeah, for me, he's now made a, a great film in five decades. 
because uh, I consider Catch Me If You Can a great movie that I can watch anytime it's on television. So that's a great film from the last decade. And I think this one is going to be it for this one. So that's pretty That's pretty amazing. Um, I mean, all the background stuff. Everything is just subdued. His whole work here. All the background stuff. John Williams' score. Uh, Kaminsky's photography. Spielberg does get his you know big white lighting and everything. But it's natural light that basically was only like they had in, uh, in those days indoors. Um, so everything just feels very, very subdued. And... Um, it was the right choice, and it pays off really, really, really well. Uh, now, as far as the actors go, I'll get to Day Lewis last. As far as the actors go, people have heard complaints about like Sally Field and Joseph Gordon Levitt. I don't know Levitt's character, like all the other side characters in the film, they're fine. Um, the performances in the movie range from, you know, solid to great to just pretty much amazing. So. Uh, he was fine. He, you know, the movie really isn't about him. He's a part of the film because that adds a layer to Lincoln, pretty much. That's really it. Um, if you want to see a gr great work by Levette, just go see Looper, you know. Um, or even he was, I mean, you know, he has more substantial stuff to do in Dark Knight Rises and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah. And Sally Field, who I don't, I can't remember the last movie that Sally Field was in uh, that I, you know, really thought like wow she's great um but i thought she was great in this and uh, she was able to take a character that could be really cliche and just um over the top and was able to rein her in and that's probably due to the way the film was made like i said everything was kind of subdued so even her being a little over the top just didn't it didn't go to that next level um where it was bothersome as far as the oh well all right you know what? tommy lee jones is what I mean I again uh, I thought his work in the Sunset Limited which is the HBO movie was probably the best work he's done in a long time but this this was great this was just great stuff his uh, his character was just funny and just every second he was on screen the movie just completely lit up and now as far as the rest of the cast all the um, the minor roles, David Strathiram, uh, Jared Hess, uh, what's his name, Rorschach, I can't, uh, Jackie Earl ha uh, Haley, James Spader, uh, John Hawks, and Tim Blake Nelson play a uh, triumvirate of um, guys that are trying to basically pay off Democrats to, uh, to vote for the 13th Amendment, which is what the film is basically about. Uh, getting the 13th Amendment passed to abolish slavery before the Civil War ends. So, so yeah. So those three guys were just really, that was funny. And that's the thing about the movie. The movie's very funny. It's probably funnier than the Vampire Hunter movie. And uh, I think that the humor in it, especially in, in the performance by Lincoln and Day-Lewis, makes you care even more about pretty much everything that's going on. It makes you even care more about the man Abraham Lincoln and able to see him in you know such a human light besides his uh, the flaws that they do show that he has and I think that was very important and also to not get bogged down in just politics by the way very very funny to see the House of Representatives just scream at each other like children and you know harumph and all that stuff very very funny uh, there's a bunch of other smaller roles in the movie uh, one, anyone that watches Breaking Bad, guy plays Gail Bedecker, actually had a really decent sized role, a very, very good. So, I've done Breaking Bad reviews on here, so if you're watching that, yeah. Uh, I guess I'll just get to Day-Lewis. Back when I reviewed The Master, I said this is probably gonna be like a two-person race between Joaquin Phoenix and Daniel Day-Lewis. I don't think it is anymore. And I thought Phoenix was gonna have the upper hand on the fact that Day-Lewis won twice, but... No, not a chance. Uh, Day-Lewis is going to get... If Day-Lewis doesn't get his third Oscar, it's just ridiculous. Because it's one thing to be you know, big and loud. And even the Daniel Plainview performance, which you know, he's great. But this, he's so... It's so much more impressive to me to have, some, to have him just like kind of sit there and give a look or a smile. Or just the way he sits there and you watch him think. Like he's acting, thinking. And it's one of the great things about 
Lincoln as you watch the movie is that he listens and he pays attention to everyone and then he comes to a decision when he feels like it's right or he'll have a at one point in the movie he has a point of view about something and he changes it midstream because he thinks about it and these are i mean it's just it was it's i think it's actually the best work he's done in his career and that's um i mean that's really saying something for this guy but he doesn't really have any loud moments with the exception of the ones that you already saw in the trailer, which again is why the trailer was pretty much misleading. Um, but he, he was just, he was incredible. And I hope, I hope he works at Spielberg again. And I hope he, you know, because if they can, you know, Spielberg's supposed to make it a Moses movie. If they lose, wants to play it, go right ahead. Uh, especially if Kushner's going to write it. So I hope they do do that. But, but yeah, just great, uh, great stuff all around. I will say this: um, the movie is two and a half hours long, and I didn't mind it at all. However, the film should have ended about two minutes earlier than it did, and this is a, if you want to call it a spoiler, um, fine. I guess if you don't want to know the ins and outs of how it ends, I'm sure you can guess how it ends. But the film should have ended with the shot of, uh, let's say, I should say, there's a shot of Lincoln walk, walking down a hallway. That's how the movie should have ended, because it would have been perfect. Instead, it goes two minutes, a little bit too long. There's a manipulation scene, and then there's another very good scene right after that. That's, you know, kind of emotional and everything like that. And we're spared the, what you would, the moment you'd think you'd get. At least from this type of ending, from the from you know this type of movie that's taking place over the last four months of his life. Uh, but then there's this one cheesy shot that kind of reminded me of Schindler's List, and it kind of took me out of the movie and just made me go like, "Oh, Steve, you had to throw yourself in for you know two seconds, didn't you?" Uh, and I love, I love, like I said, I love Spielberg, but still, it's just like, "Oh, come on!" And I know why the shot is there. It's supposed to remind us from something earlier in the movie. Uh, and then the movie kind of ends with this moment where you're supposed to, like, kind of, it's all of a sudden we've seen Lincoln the man, and I guess the last few seconds are about, you know, the Lincoln that we all kind of know from history. Uh, maybe that's what it's trying to say here. Or just basically, I don't know. It, just, it didn't really work. The last, like, two minutes of the movie should have been, um, not that they should have not been there, but they should have just not happened the way they did. So, uh... I'm still going, like, I guess for a 10, if you want, I'll call it like a 9.5, 9.8 or something like that. But, yeah, it was still fantastic. So, if you think you can handle a wall-to-wall -wall dialogue film, um, and if you love Spielberg or you don't love him, I think you should check this out. If you love Day-Lewis, check this out. It's just, yeah, it really, really, really was fantastic. And, um, yeah, so that's it. All right, I'm probably going to review Skyfall on Sunday because I think I'm going to see it on Sunday. So I'll be back with that. And I know I said um a bunch of times. And again, I'm supposed to have editing software that uh, I didn't get yet. So sorry about that, guys. But um, there we go again. Anyway, later.